Hello everyone, this is Jennifer Escalera and I'm here today with Jen Wilding. Hello. Hi Jen. Hi. Hey, so Jen is a personal development coach and hypnosis practitioner based in Los Angeles. Her work has attracted the attention of celebrities in the acting, music, technology, and entertainment industries. She specializes in helping women to heal their hearts after a breakup at the subconscious level. Welcome, Jen. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here. And just a little background uh, with Jen and I, we met a few years ago. We we're both hypnotherapists and uh, just really, um, I, I really found you to be dear uh, because you are who you are. And I hope that whoever is watching this today will get that feel from you. And I wanted to talk to you and, and find out about the work that you've been doing because I feel like it will help women as well as men um, to go beyond just where they're at in their lives, right? Yeah. And it's, so tell us a little bit about or tell me a little bit about what the work that you're doing and um, what your book is about. Yeah. So uh, I am, one of my specialties is helping women to get out of heartbreak and back into love. And I say women because that's been my primary clientele, although I have worked with some men too, and I do have currently some men clients. I don't have um, a book for them yet. The book that's coming out is specifically for women, but, and, and it's related to uh, the one-on-one -on -one work that I've done with women. So I'll kind of just talk generally about how I help people with love and then talk to you about, I guess, how I came to want to write the book. Um, so I, myself, struggled with uh, this issue in life as far as getting pretty far into life without having a significant relationship. And I was dating and I felt like I was giving it my best, but I wasn't really getting good results. Uh, I wasn't having healthy relationships. They were not sustainable. Uh, it was hard to maintain them. If I really liked someone, it just seemed like everything is, was very elusive and I didn't know what was going wrong. And I I felt like I had a lot to offer a relationship, but I didn't know what was going on there. And I ha it was really a struggle that was very personal to me. And it was something that I got to the point where I was like, if I ever lick this, uh, it's, it's such a pain for me. And it's it, to a subconscious level where it was embarrassing, really, because so many other people in my life were easily hooking up and being coupled off and getting married and, uh, you know, establishing great relationships with partners. And it's just like, I, I wanted that. So I said to myself, you know, if I ever figure it out, and one of the routes that I took, of course, was I was always working on myself doing personal development work. And some of how I got into that was that it was very, I started to be attracted to experiential development work that is, reminded me of my method acting training because I have a background in acting and, uh, and uh, all sorts of creative arts. And I realized that personal development work can be very creative. So I was working on myself. And also uh, when I was living in Chicago, this is about, so for about 11 years, I lived in Chicago. And during that time, there was a year that I decided to take a job as a matchmaker to figure it out. Um, not for myself, but just because I thought I can learn anything. And if I can learn how to get people love um, who are looking for love, then I can do that for myself. So I wanted to take a bird's eye view, like a researcher and really um, hone in on what's going on there. So um, this work that I've developed here for my practice is a combination of me actually having gone through that, having learned a lot, um, working as a matchmaker and um, working through personal development stuff, experiential work, creative work, and finding what worked for me to really give me the ahas that I can pass on to somebody and say, let me share with you the secrets that were really eye-opening for me, the things that you may not realize are going on, the things that involve the subconscious, and you and I both work a lot with the subconscious as hypnotherapists. Uh, and it's natural that this would be something I would offer. Um, I started as more of a general hypnotist, but this became a specialty because I had a personal story around it, because it's something that I had agreed with myself that I was gonna do if I ever figured it out. 
I can relate to the people in that struggle. I can speak the language and feel the pain and say, here's what's going on. And also introduce people to a creative way to address it and to explore what's going on and to open your eyes to a different way of approaching love attraction. Mm -hmm. And what, can I ask? A yeah, question? sure. What's, what's one thing that you got out of the matchmaking? What was the one thing that mm. um, you, it revealed itself to you that you understood about matchmaking and love and relationship? So this is something um, that I do talk about in the book too, but I'll give you some, some secrets that there are differences in culturally how men and women approach dating that inhibit uh, the actual uh, matching process, even when people are a good match. And also, I, I kind of reveal that what I learned about matchmaking is, is that it's not a good way to meet a mate. So I'll give you that one right there, because it's very artificial in that nobody ever in their subconscious uh, field of dreams of how their love is going to unfold and how they meet that special person imagines using a service to do it. They just don't. Now, they might uh, be doing some online dating and things like that, but they're still orchestrating a lot of that. The idea that someone would be involved in matching you with somebody or that you're in a pool of people looking for love, it, it starts to become a little bit contrived, which works subconsciously against everybody involved in that scene. So that's something that I took away. It's doable. It can be done, but it's the odds are against you of that being a really good way. And also um, when I'm talking about men and women having different approaches, men prefer one-on-one -on -one meetings and women prefer to meet their mate or be introduced to men in groups or in a place that they feel safe. So automatically, when a man is trying to get your attention, like for him, the, the way to, to figure out if you're a good date is to sort of test drive and be alone with you. But that sets off all sorts of flags, red flags, as it should with women, because it's hard to know. Like if this person is somebody you don't know, you don't go places by them where you're spending a lot of alone time. You'd rather meet them when you're with your friends or be introduced in a setting where you feel pretty comfortable and you don't feel on the spot and you can be more relaxed that way and feel safe. So those kinds of things end up working against men and women in the way they approach dating in environments and they don't realize how much that plays into their success of that interaction subconsciously. Can you explain a little bit about the subconscious and how that Sure. So when people ask me what is the subconscious mind, uh, I talk about it in terms of it's where our imaginative mind and our emotional mind meet. And a lot of that is something that we're not aware of. It's programs are running all the time in the background. One example I will give people is to say, if I were to give you a, um, a, a date that we're going to meet again. Like if I were to say November 5th, uh, we're going to get together at two o'clock uh, and you receive that information, there's stuff going on in your orientation to time, to calendar, to dates that is happening that you don't usually think about. And people orient to it different ways. Some people will have a video of what you know, they'll, they'll be able to say, oh, that, that's the day that is my sister's birthday party. And they go into a video mode of what's happening then. And then they kind of think, oh, I could do something before. And they imagine themselves doing it. Some people see the calendar. Some people see the number dates. Some people see the November written abbreviated or written out or in cursive or like the calendar on their refrigerator. We have all different sort of ways that we orient to time. But the the package in which we orient to it, we don't realize, impacts how we recall that event and how we act on it, how we behave in a space and time, the way that we review appointments. So I kind of give that as a sample of something that you can play with as far as, we, we do this for everything. You know, not a lot of people think about how they think about time, but also not a lot of people think about how they think about love and relationships and their expectations around the roles and who they want to meet. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's applicable. And how does that 
play itself out in helping someone heal a heartbreak? How does the subconscious level sure. type of work that you do? So one of the reasons that hypnotists are uh, good at what they do in working with uh, fears and addictions and building confidence, so I'm going to say those areas are kind of a specialist. They cover a lot of topics, but if you consider fears, addictions, and confidence, those are all wrapped up in somebody who's dealing with a breakup because we can be addicted to people. We can be addicted to what we had that we no longer have and we're experiencing withdrawal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can also be afraid that we're going to be alone. We can also be afraid that that was my last chance or I'm never going to find somebody like that again or afraid that maybe I don't want that guy, but I'm afraid I'm never going to find love or I'm afraid I'm not going to find love in time to have a, a family if I'm on a, a biological clock timeline. Um, there's all sorts of fears that play come into play and all of those emotional events as far as around uh, fears and addictions are within the subconscious and um, that's where the root the roots are mm -hmm. so to help somebody heal from a breakup you want to be going right there to um, what's really causing their anguish their pain their disorientation sometimes when the world that you thought was going to be in your future with this person is now wiped clear and you don't know what's going on. It can be very sort of discombobulating or disorienting. Yeah. So it's about getting centered again, finding your identity as a confident single person who can exude and exhibit love and experience love outside of a relationship because we tend to attract what we are. Yeah. yeah. In that sense, partners can be our guru and that they can reflect what we're really going through or what we need. And, and that's how you can also look at your past lovers is when you, when you kind of take an inventory, what do they reflect that is most reflects what you were afraid of at the time or, um, you know, what were you were clinging to at the time uh, that, you want to move past and address that before the next relationship. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of the work that I do with my clients is breaking through that subconscious or inner wounded child um, self-esteem, lack of self-worth or self-love that really blocks them from being able to attract someone who will be that mirror or the reflection of who they can be today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I didn't ask you what the name of your book was. So, so the name of the book uh, is Steal His Heart, Save Your Life, Just Not in That Order. And that book is in particular, um, the, the subtitle is The Subconscious Art of uh, the Sing Still Single Woman's Guide to the Subconscious Art of Attracting a Man. Mm -hmm. And so that would be for the any woman, and it could even be women in relationships that are just wanting to improve them or, be, or if they feel insecure about maintaining them, there's some good info there too. I talk about my matchmaking experiences. I talk about being set up on a matchmaking date and what that was like. I talk about types and um, certainly mindset. And there are a lot of practical exercises that you can do that are interactive with your own subconscious mind to get things to a really grounded place, a really centered place in your best self, your true, true identity self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what compelled you to actually write a book versus just doing the one-on-one -on -one work or just even sure. the, the teachings and workshops that you do? So, there are a lot of people in my life personally that I know, and, and I don't know if you've experienced this as a practitioner, but there's something about, and I totally get it because when I am friends with somebody who is also in a, in a, a service like this, um, things seem too personal. So I have a lot of friends that they would be in a breakup or um, they would be looking for love and they would always want to pick my brain, but they don't want to do a session with me because that's that's too far. It's not like, well, I don't need, I don't need to be your client. I'm not that kind of person. 
you know, and, and even ones that I'd be happy to do, uh, you know, I've known for a long time and, and they've given so much to me. So I'd love to give back to them in that way. It's a little bit of a strange area because we're so close. And there were times where they were wanting to get sound bites from me and I'm wanting to give them exercises, but also not infringe on the privacy that they want around that issue because I'm too close to their life or I may know their ex or, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They don't want me. See, they're, what happens is their subconscious inserts me into an evaluation mode so they can't view me as a helper. And I get that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be able instead to give them something that is exactly what I would do if I was with them and they can do it on their own. So this is something that, you know, gives a lot of women access to my tools, my philosophy, how I approach things, to the learnings that I've had around this. And I also talk about case studies from the clients that I've worked with. So, I mean, it, it's even useful for practitioners too, if they just kind of wanted to say, oh, you know, what, what is somebody else doing? Uh, anybody who is a love coach might be interested in it too. So um, just what is somebody else doing with this practice and where is it going? And so I have little snippets of, of dialogue and stories and metaphors and exercises specifically for that purpose. So originally my thought was I, I, just had too many instances where I wished I could just hand something off um, and say, you know, on your own time, do what you will. And, you know, I've had, I've had videos, I have resources too, but I think there's just something different with a book. Uh, some people, that's the way they prefer to get their information. A lot of my friends are voracious readers. They, they love to read um, nonfiction books and some some of them fiction books and so I th I wanted to get some resources out there I'm a I'm a reader so yeah. it's I'm happy to also be in that space to count myself among authors since I am somebody who devours nonfiction books myself right 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 so this is for women who enjoy reading and going a little bit further than just your typical love coach type of scenario not to diss anyone you know. no i mean it would everything everything's cumulative right so um when i was researching around this issue i had a stack of books mm -hmm. uh and all of them contributed to my knowledge so i just you know i can be inserted into the resources someone is looking into and for me this is the book i wish was written that sums up everything that worked for me but everybody is coming to it from a different place and i'm just putting it out there uh, as a resource so that other women can at least have the resource that i wish existed when i was reading lots of books on the subject and i was trying to figure things out for myself yeah well i love how um, original and unique this is when it comes to healing heartbreaks and love and relationships because to be honest I don't know of any book that really specializes in healing the subconscious or even exploring the subconscious and being able to look into quote unquote as a science of healing and yeah I know that that that's something that you enjoy. I, I enjoy that. I'm both left and right brain. So to be able to have something that's concrete as well as that's something that is going to um, transform me so that I could open my heart and be more open-minded and then see where the wounds really start from and then being able to attract someone who's healthy for me. Yeah. And the thing is, it's a fun process. Yeah. Uh, that's the difference is it's is as much as you could think, oh, I don't really, that kind of sounds heavy. It's not. It's actually a really fun process because it's a self-learning process. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, you through the exercises can learn a lot about yourself. Now, this one is not specifically geared toward breakup recovery, but it could certainly help somebody if you are focused on trying to get your ex back because you are just really, you know, wanting the tips for there, you'll still get pick up this book because it's about steal his heart. You'll want the information and it may work for you to do that, but you'll want to do this work first so that you can even be sure if that's the relationship that you want. Because what happens is when we get in a really healthy place, we attract different people Absolutely. and we attract the people that we wish we had attracted 
before we got healthy, and that's really the difference. And when I say healthy, I just mean a sense of a better management of our emotions in a way that um, I describe it a lot of times as loving fearlessly, even though that can be um, a little misleading. I use that term because it's imitating what clients have wanted from me. Mm -hmm. um, they've wanted to love fearlessly without fear. And I have to tell them, you can't divorce fear, but you can make friends with it. And what we really want when we say we want to be fearless in dating and love is that we want to lose the hold or the grip of irrational fears that keep us from being who we want to be, uh, that keep us from interacting with people the way we really want to interact, the yeah. way we would fantasize about being able to um, or not. And and I would even challenge any any women who, there were times where I, I would, was surprising myself doing my own work, thinking that I had an area all figured out, but then doing the work, you realize, oh, I, I didn't really. <laughs> and that to me is, you know, you can't know what you don't know. And sometimes you think you have something locked down, like, oh, that's not really the area I need to dig into. And then it gets uncovered and then you realize, oh, maybe I need to revisit that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like for those of the women who want to read this book, it's also the self-development. It's that personal growth. Uh, it's a big part of it. And a deeper understanding of who they are so that they could attract that ideal guy or their relationship. Even if they're in the relationship, right? This is for women who are also in relationships. Well, I would say if you're in a relationship, but it's uh, not exactly, you don't feel locked into it. Like you don't feel like, oh, like you're not married. You're, you're still a single woman and you really want this to be the guy, but you're unsure. Like I have some clients say, I just don't want to fuck it up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, you can edit that out if you need to, but um, <laughs> that, there are are ways in which we are already aware we've self-sabotaged before and when we have something really good sometimes you just want to be aware of how do I not self-sabotage again and this would definitely answer those questions Ooh, that's a great one yeah I mean I hear that all the time that was part of my problem is I was constantly self-sabotaging my true love and just being able to see what my worth was so yeah that is going to help I know that these women really need to read this book. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, this is the book that I wish that was available. Yeah. Um, because it would have sped my process up. I mean, this was a, this is a accumulation of maybe uh, over a 15 year time span, but I've been working with women on this for the last seven years. And I've even honed my work within the last seven years, which is what is also in the development of the book. Um, the things that I discovered, not just with me, but working with other women and customizing my uh, work with them. So what I do now, um, and the book is a, a nice lead into this if anybody were wanting to take it further, is I work with clients one-on-one -on -one in Los Angeles. I do, um, I have a day for off office visits. I do some home visits. I do some Skype visits for people who aren't in LA, and I offer those in a package form. So there's a breakup recovery boost, and uh, there's a love boost program, uh, depending on what uh, track you're on, where you are currently with what is needed, and it, and there's that um, indicator assessment on my website that yeah. can help women. So I'll give that now. Um, it's If you go to stealhisheartbook.com, and on the right-hand side, you'll see, like, take the test. It's um, the love attraction indicator. And you can just take a short quiz answering some questions and it'll categorize you. Like, are you in a place where you're actually pretty ready for love? You, you're in a good place. So it's going to probably happen for you soon, subconsciously. Or do you, um, are you love challenged? Do you need a little bit of tweaking subconsciously? Or are you in need of heart healing? Like there's a little bit of deeper work 
they're relating to getting some closure with past relationships, getting some healing from past wounds. So just from those questions, uh, you'll be directed to complimentary resources, video resources, depending on which track you're on. Wow, that's really awesome. So you can figure out where you are at the stage of readiness to find yeah. love or where you might still be stuck subconsciously. And yeah, it'll tell you, uh, you know, some people may not be sure, like, I don't know, like, do I need to get over things from my past or am I just needing a little bit of tweaking? I'm just a little love challenged. You can take the test and find out and it'll direct you to the resources that are going to be best suited to uh, what's going on for you based on your answers to those questions. And can you repeat that website again? Yeah. So steal his heart book dot com so you want to be sure you put the word book in there steal his heart book dot com and also you'll have an opportunity to learn about the book that's coming out next month mm -hmm. so um yeah I'll be, I'll be sending out information about it when it's available for everyone to pick up wonderful and is that do you know if it's going to be available online or in bookstores or both or uh, it's definitely going to be available online and hopefully eventually in bookstores. But it's going to kind of take the trajectory of starting online sales, Amazon for sure, um, and uh, also in digital form. I do a lot of books on Kindle these days because yeah. I lost. I I'm running out of space in my home to <laughs> to have any. I mean, they look books look great as a, a decorative item, but there's a point in which they become like too much and so I've definitely enjoyed doing digital downloads of books now and then I can carry lots of them with me at a time yeah yeah and will this book ever become um, a narrative I, I forget what they're called but oh an audiobook an audio thank you yeah audio. yes that'll be later probably um, in the first part of next the first quarter of next year oh, I awesome. hope to finish the audiobook on that very very cool I know yeah. a lot of um, my clients and uh, the people I run into, they enjoy audiobooks. I do too. If yeah. they commute a lot, and in Los Angeles, if you're stuck in traffic a lot, it is definitely practical to have audiobooks as your go-to to to take your mind elsewhere. Exactly, exactly. Well, is there any last thing that you want us to know or to leave with us today that you that you think that would be important for us to learn more about you or just some tips or just anything? Yeah. Um, well, I, I will say that we talked a lot about my work with women. I do work with men as well. Um, in fact, it's kind of interesting that um, uh, men are more secretive about it, I found, um, in that women talk about what I do. So I get a lot of word of mouth referrals, but occasionally a guy will find out about what I do and then it's kind of like, okay, um, so do you think you could do that for me too? So um, that I work with both men and women that um, if you're interested in working with me, um, you have the book site, which is um, a way to get on my mailing list as well. If you want to sign up there, you can get some resources from me and see kind of um, glimpses of of my philosophy, how I work. And if you'd like to take it further, a way to reach me if you wanted to go to uh, right now, um, hypnosiswestlosangeles.com is the way to get there. Um, and that would be so you could find out about scheduling sessions if you're interested in a package. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jen, for sharing all this beautiful and wonderful wisdom. And I hope hey, yeah. that these women will book with you, book a session, get your book. And, yeah. And transform their lives and find the love that they deserve and wish you all the success. Thanks. Thank I definitely enjoy the work that I do. And thanks for having me on. Thank you. Bye. Bye.